Thank you for attending this episode of the Triangle Family Web Series. Uh, this session will begin in just a moment as we allow folks to make their way in from the waiting room. As folks are joining us, a quick reminder that this session is being recorded. It will be available for later viewing on our YouTube channel. A portion of today's session will include a live Q&A with our panelists, but at any time throughout tonight's session, please feel free to utilize the question and answer feature that's located at the bottom of your screen. A few reminders for that Q&A feature, please do not share any personal information. You may submit questions anonymously, and we will address as many questions as we can on the back end, as well as asking them live to our panelists after the set presentation today. Good afternoon, good morning, and or good evening from wherever you may be joining us for this episode of the Trying Family Web Series. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to support your student success here at UC San Diego and to join us for this session entitled Mapping the Future, a, a deep dive into the Trying Career Readiness Passport that is uh, provided by our awesome and wonderful UC San Diego Career Center. Um, you know, that we know it's important that not just your students be successful here while they're studying at UC San Diego, but that it prepares them for what their next step is. And not just the immediate next step, but what they are prepared to do throughout their entire career. Uh, so we have a great uh, panel here to cover what the Career Readiness Passport uh, does support your students and how it prepares them for life after UC San Diego. So uh, with that said, I'll introduce one of our first panelists, uh, Todd Oliveri, the uh, Director for Student Employment and Career Readiness. Thanks so much, Dan. Really appreciate it. Sorry about that. Um, welcome, everyone. I'm here with my colleague, Megan Martinez Montano, who's a Senior Associate Director in the Career Center. We're excited to be with you here tonight. We're going to talk a little bit about the new Triton Career Readiness Passport, a little bit about the Career Center and really about the future of work and what that means for, for our students. We're excited to share insights on how the landscape of work is changing rapidly and what strategies UC San Diego is employing to stay ahead of the curve. We'll share some thoughts on the current state of work, the trend shaping its future, and the necessary adaptations we might consider as we turn the page to this next era. But let's first mention the present state of the job market that's characterized by globalization, technological, technological advancements, and demographic shifts, which really sets the stage for understanding the future. These elements are not isolated, but intricately connected. And what you'll see is that it's actually driving monumental change in how we approach employment and careers. There's no major in careers. The word career has been redefined and for the first time ever, more people are leaving their scripted lives in search of more purpose and meaning. 
So what we're going to talk about tonight is that purpose and meaningful work. And, and what are some of the services that UC San Diego Career Center offers? We're going to go into the competencies that we've, we've identified at the, at the university and how they integrated into the Triton Career Readiness Passport. And we're also going to talk about those efforts and how they're collective at the university. And we want to share some the, the power of stories and telling student stories is really important to us. Before we get, get into all that, we want to just tell you who we are, what we're about, what we value. And so our vision is to transform the landscape of the global workforce by ensuring that all UC San Diego graduates create purpose and align their filling work. Our mission is to empower Tritons to proactively design their careers and lives to align meaningful opportunities throughout their lifetimes. Philosophically, our Career Center is an ecosystem rather than a place, and we believe that be, to be successful, students must ex explore their curiosity, be comfortable with uncertainty, and take action and risks. Our career and life design philosophy encourages students to build lifelong career skills, hold themselves accountable, and take ownership of, a, of their careers. And our values of equity, diversity, and inclusion guide us to develop and implement policies, programs, and practices that are equitable, representative, and accessible to all communities. Next slide. Now let's go through a snapshot of what the Career Center offers. So here you'll see six um, overarching areas that we service. So things like career consulting, meeting one-on-one -on -one with a career advisor to go over any questions that your students might have. We also host virtual and in-person career fairs. Uh, no matter what ways the employers or students wish to engage as a platform to do so. We have a variety of professional development opportunities for students, whether it's looking for career education or resumes, uh, whatever they're looking to learn, we have an opportunity and a chance for them to explore that. Um, next is employer information sessions. We work very hard to cultivate organic and rich employer relations. Um, so we host these throughout the year with a variety of industries, variety of uh, methodologies and um, modalities as well. Um, On-campus interviews is next. So we are lucky enough to have interview space in our career center and employers use this when interviewing our, some students of ours. And it's been a really great opportunity because we get to connect with the students, make sure they're prepped right before they go into their interview. And lastly, the online resources. We know students learn in a variety of ways at a variety of times. So we like to make sure that they have a lot of resources at their fingertips. Next slide, please. Uh, I briefly talked about the career fairs that we host. So here is a snapshot from one of our fairs in the past. Um, we have taken a hybrid approach. We host not only in-person, also virtual um, career fairs. So depending on what modality works for our students or employers, we're able to offer um, a lot of opportunities for them to engage. So this past year, we had eight virtual fairs and almost 10,000 students registered for these fairs. And we have some more in the spring that we're really excited about. Something that we are very proud of is that out of the entire UC system, we have one of the highest employee registration numbers, right around 450 companies. We use different modalities for our fairs, usually handshake. Um, and if you're, as your students come on to the UC San Diego campus, they'll become very familiar with this platform. Um, but we also are very accessible to the students. If they have questions about preparing, if they have questions about how to navigate any of these kinds of experiences, we are here to help them. Next slide, please. I also briefly touched upon the need for online resources. Our students learn at different times of the day. I wish I could provide a resume review for them at 2 a.m. as they're applying to internships, but my schedule just simply doesn't allow for that. 
So we try to make sure that all of our resources are up to date and the most relevant, really connecting to the needs of the students. So we have a plethora of online resources for them. And uh, some of them are here. So our digital resources, so things like our resume reviews or help with cover letters or um, advice when we are not available, they can find pretty easily. Um, but we also have resources that really push them to explore. Our YouTube channel has a lot of really great, amazing content for them that just gets them thinking about their career. What, what should they be processing right now? What are what things should be the top of mind as they're going through their career and life journey. We have our career readiness password that we're going to be going over today. I'm very excited to get a little bit more into the nuts and bolts of this. So you'll see a lot more detailed about how to understand where um, the students are in their path and being able to create almost a checklist for them of things to strive to do throughout their journey. We also have a podcast and a uh, Triton Mindset blog. These are really great resources to help students think differently about their career and life journey. Next slide, please. In addition, we have a, a robust student employment program where over 6,000 students at the university are working on campus or some off-campus federal work study positions in over 170 departments on campus. And it really, um, our, our, our team helps students find opportunities, everything's posted on Handshake, but it's really to help students to develop those transferable skills, get some paid opportunities. They're part-time opportunities while students are studying, they're, they're here to be a student first, but it also gives them an opportunity to develop some of the core competencies that we're gonna talk about a little bit later on. And we also have a new program that started last year and it's called the Learning Aligned Employment Program. And that's for on-campus research positions. So students from underrepresented and students with financial need who, who demonstrate financial need, California residents uh, based on the FAFSA can qualify for these paid research positions with undergraduate research hub and some other research areas around campus. Next slide, please. We've talked a lot about experiences. Let's talk a little bit about skills. So this uh, chart is from the National Association of Colleges and Employers. They ask companies and recruiters and students where they think they rank on a variety of skills. And you can see some of them here. You'll see the blue bar is where companies rank, where they think students fall as far as their um, degree of strength in these skills. And the green is where students think that they um, fall. So you'll see a little bit of discrepancies here. Um, there's a little bit of a gap between where employers believe that students are when they graduate and where students think that they are in proficiency when they graduate. So how do we identify these gaps in every student that comes to UC San Diego and how do we help them fill those gaps? How do we help them understand how to build their critical thinking skills, their teamwork skills? And the career, Triton Career Readiness Passport helps them identify ways to build this skill set and even identify where their gaps are. Next slide, please. So career readiness is it's really part of the governor's compact as well. Um, so. So UC San Diego, we, we implemented the Triton Career Readiness Passport and it's it's to address career readiness. But we what we realized is as that slide showcased, there's a there's a gap, there's a gap in perception. And some students are doing better than others. They're all at different levels. And so how do they get there? How do what's the roadmap that they can follow? And this is what the, the, the Triton Career Readiness Passport was really designed to do is, is to help provide a guidebook, a roadmap, some tools for students not to just assess themselves, but actually practice some things. And it's, it's based on design thinking pr principles. So if we go to the next slide, we'll talk a little bit about what it looks like 
And th this is what, what we're talking about. So the Triton Career Readiness Passport is an innovative career readiness tool that helps students begin their career and life journey towards meaningful work. It serves as a personal and professional development checklist. Within the passport, students attain Triton stamps for attending career and life design activities, align a portfolio of experiences, and build a career profile. Using the, the 12 UC San Diego competencies as a foundation of this career readiness assessment, the Passport is a framework intended to thread collective impact efforts and in integrated learning across the entire campus, helping us move the needle on career readiness and aligning that purpose with an individual's co-curricular record. And the Passport is broken down into four different phases. It's assess, develop, immerse, and engage. Next slide, please. So here are the first two that Todd was speaking about, assess and develop. These are two areas that we believe students will flow through as they're on their career and life journey. And here's an example of how a student might use this. So under the assess bucket, um, we ask them to write down their core values, define success. By doing these small acts, it makes them think and reflect upon where they are, where they might be going, and it leads them into this next phase, develop. So as they are reflecting on themselves and where they would like to go and what do they think their success is, it can help them start to explore and that's that develop phase. So something in this develop category is being able to interview others, talk about what their careers are, explore and engage in those interests and curiosities. Does something pique their interest in a class or did a colleague mention something or a peer or something in a campus organization sounds interesting? These are all areas they can explore. And those are those two areas. And Todd, I'm gonna pass it to you to talk about the next two. So it, then they go to immerse. So I think that everyone can probably think of an immersion experience like an internship or an externship. We have a program at UC San Diego that's an externship program with alumni. It's called Take a Triton to Work, where students get an ex kind of a taste of what it's like to work at a different corporation or nonprofit or out in the working world. And it's it's a way, uh, it's a mentorship program. So that's an externship program. Um, and then the traditional internships, we have a lot of on-campus internships, and then we partner with a lot of companies for internships off campus as well and summer internships. UCDC is, a, is another program that we partner with that's, that gives students an opportunity to study and apply some policy research opportunities in Washington, D.C. And then engaging. And so, okay, so you've developed all these kind of phases. You know, one thing I want to talk about is so it's give back. I have this great story is a recent student was featured in UC San Diego today, and it was a student who graduated high school, um, very similar to my daughter who graduated during the pandemic. And through that online learning, which was not really uh, online learning or homeschooling, it was just schools trying to figure out how to how to teach and learn during the pandemic. And what we what we saw, and we're going to see this for years to come, the the social and emotional connections that were lost for those students. So we have this one student who decided, you know, he was a technology, he's a, a computer programming, computer engineering major, and what he wanted to do is kind of give back and help. He started networking and found the value in networking with with people in the tech industry and how he learned so much and learned about the careers that he was interested in. And he wanted to bring that back to his friends because he had a lot of uh, computer engineering friends who did, didn't really have developed personal and interpersonal skills. And so he developed a nonprofit called Treasure Hacks. And he's now doing peer-to-peer -peer teaching and mentoring of high school and college students. And he's only in his second year. So this was a student who kind of took these aspects of career development, of learning and, and trying things, and then opening up his own nonprofit to give back to his either fellow students or to high school students. Next slide, please. And 
talking about all of these stages, students will bounce back and forth between these exper ex this experiential learning process. So we use experiential learning as a bridge to connect the academic and the co-curricular, bringing together the theory and the practice, the college and the career together, intertwining them, trying to help the student understand where their passion meets what they're really good at, meets what they're doing in school. And as they are going through these four stages that we talked about, they will bounce on this continuum. And we hope that by exposing them to these experiential learning opportunities, they're able to learn by doing. And we offer a lot of different programs for them to try out and explore with them to find new ways to explore their curiosity and interests. But throughout the process, we hope that we are able to encourage real world exploration by discovering what opportunities are out there. We want them to deepen their learning by action and doing the work instead of just reading about it. We want them to develop the critical competencies that they need to be successful in the future, while also reviewing and reflecting on their learning what, and what skills they're learning and what do they need to be successful and where are their gaps here. And lastly, we hope that this builds community. We want them to get to know the peers that are in their group. They want we them to we want them to get to know their professors, their supervisors, their managers, so they feel supported in their journey. And with that, I want to talk about the skills. So it's so important that they are learning a variety of skills as they progress through their college journey. Here at UC San Diego, we've identified some competencies we think are really important that they acquire by the time that they graduate. And these skills, you'll see a lot of them are similar to the ones we saw on the previous slide with um, the, the learning gaps, because we want them to fill those gaps to be able to um, feel proficient in all of these skills. So in here, you'll see things like career development, leadership, self-reflection, research ability. We think that the curriculum alongside of any experiential learning opportunities will help them build these skills. But if a student goes through and says, you know, I don't think I have these skills, we help them find opportunities and ways to develop them. Because we think that if a student has a firm grasp on these skills, they'll be ready for the job market after they graduate. We even have a way to help them track what skills and what competencies they are um, accruing throughout their time here. Next slide, Dan. And this we call the co-curricular record. So this is an official record used by the school to track their um, on-campus engagement and other types of experiential learning. And it actually challenges them to think about the skills that they're learning while they're doing these roles. And when they are, um, when they're done, they actually get an unofficial transcript that has, or official transcript that has all of these skills tied to it. So this is a way that we are showing the value that is placed on all of the extracurricular opportunities that students are pursuing. But this also gives them the time to reflect on what skills they are gaining. What skills are they still needing? What are they lacking? What do they need to strengthen? And this is also a great place for them to showcase or show um, to an employer what skills they have used while they've been in, in college. And if we go to the next slide, here is an example of what that would look like. So here is a sample transcript. They can not only share it with employers, it can also um, be used for graduate school, any kind of, or scholarships, anything that they wish to add, um, to add, I guess, another layer of evidence to what they've been doing during their college career, they could add this co-curricular snapshot. And I think we do a great job in being able to educate students on what would go on these different, on this uh, co-curricular record. And I'll pass it over to Todd to talk about our career readiness assessment. So the, the 
passport is a roadmap. But to, to kind of know what road to follow, you have to do some assessments. And so we were just talking about the, the competencies, the skills, where do you lie on those? So we partnered with Career Launch, which is a third party assessment company. And they partner with many schools like Stanford and Tulane and Marymount, Loyola Marymount. And, and what they're doing is they're providing a starting point. And so we, we've partnered with Student Affairs and, and career launch to implement this, this assessment tool. Okay, it's a readiness assessment. And what, what we don't talk about is like how we actually assess and how, how we help students do that. So what we're doing is we're encouraging them to take it three times at the beginning of their educational career, the middle and at the end. And what it does is when they start out, it starts as a, as a baseline for for they for them to measure how prepared they are for the world of work. Okay. And then in this next slide we have here, how confident are you? Well, this is taken right from the passport. And what, what this is, is called the Career Readiness IQ. And our, uh, our executive director, Hassan Akmal, he developed this concept. And it's essentially what we want to know holistically, how confident are you in terms of hitting the ground running in a new role after graduation? And, you know, how, how do you feel about those competencies? So this is used to kind of use that career ready tracker in your, your tracker and you're, you're rating yourself. And there's an initial rating and then a final rating so that you can gauge your progress. And what we use this for is, is our coaches are using this one-on-one -on -one so that they can work with students one-on-one. -on -one. But as a career center, what we're also using this for is to gauge from back to that slide of where's the gap in competencies. Well, so if there's a gap, what are we doing as a career center to fill that gap? So this is another tool that we have to, to analyze the data so that we can say, you know what? Students need these kinds of workshops, or we should develop a career career education course of career and life design. We developed one that's in the first year experience, and now we we need to expand this and and take these design thinking principles even further. So it's 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 um it's something that informs not just the the one on one student relationship with a career coach, but also the leadership from the executive director and the entire leadership team. All, all the way down to to develop new and and basically change as the times are changing as in students needs change we're able to utilize this to change with the times next slide please and i hope that as we're speaking you're seeing a thread kind of through what we're saying um we've really emphasized the journey there are a lot of different ways they can go and uh, stops they can make along the way, but we really believe that it is about the journey, not the destination. A goal is great, but we could end up bump in a road in the road. Um, I had a student that I worked with who really loved working with kids, loved working with kids, thought they wanted to be a teacher. That was their their passion. That's what they were really excited about. Well, we did a, a job shadow where they were in a first grade classroom for a couple of days and they came back and they said, I don't want to work with the little kids. That's that's not my focus area. So I said, great. They were really bummed though. They thought, well, I thought I wanted to do this and now I don't know where to go. I feel so lost. I said, let's focus on what you liked and what you didn't like. So sitting down with that student and going through what were the pros, what were the cons, and getting in the nitty gritty with them, we realized we just had the wrong age group. They liked working with people. They liked working with people younger than them, just not first graders. They're now a high school teacher teaching chemistry and they absolutely love it. So it just, this really hands-on approach and this learn by doing is really something we're embracing. And we hope that um, by providing a roadmap such as this, it gives a little bit of guidance to students, but a lot of freedom to find their own path and find their own way of solving these problems and exploring these things. Not every career exploration is a one size fits all. Some people it's gonna be great if they're able to dive into the research and read some articles and some books. Others are gonna really wanna talk to people. Some people wanna do all of it. 
So really finding the right path and the right mix for each student is really important. And that's what this passport provides. It provides examples, some things to try out. And if they don't work, we'll scrap it. And we'll find something else. Um, and that's why I think this tool is really powerful for our students. And we've taken this collective impact approach to it where we're, we mentioned we're threading it through the entire university. And here's some examples where it's, it's um, we're, we're, we're trying to bring in partners around the university. We're a large university, complicated university. Um, large organizations I've worked in the past can develop silos. And th this is something that breaks down silos. And so we have the student employment program is in the, the passport. We have the learning aligned employment program and many other partners where students are getting research ready. And so a little bit more about this learning aligned employment program. So I mentioned that at the top and it's a brand new program that we implemented last year and it's to help students develop their research skills. And as Megan showed in that competency slide, what, because we're a leading research university, one of our competencies is research ability. And so we we have this program where it's applied, where we know that some students don't have opportunities to do research. And this program is also giving us an opportunity to do non-traditional research. So not just lab research. So supply chain research, marketing research, things like that, where we can we can create research experiences and, and apprenticeships through this program. And so when, when a student does this, they go through the, these steps. And if they take all these steps, they do that career readiness assessment in the career launch. They'll review their resume and cover letter with, with a career coach. They do mock interviews um, and interview coaching with that, with that career coach. They'll search for the research position on Handshake. They'll apply and interview for that research job. They'll also attend how to get the most out of their research experience, that professional development session, um, and then work in that in at least one quarter. We also developed a, a student employment in a late student self-assessment and then a supervisor or a mentor assessment where the student is rating themselves on the competencies and then the supervisor or the mentor they're working with is also rating them on those competencies and giving them feedback so that they have areas of improvement. Go to the next slide. And with a program such as this, we don't do it on our own. We used a lot of our campus partners to not only build this passport, but also to add their programs to it. And here there are special um, specialty programs that other areas on campus host. Anything that we think would be beneficial to a student to help explore um, their career, their life goals has been included in this passport. So it's very inclusive, not only just the career nuts and bolts, but all across the college um, or the university. And we think that it's really important to say that is a very important key, important piece to this passport. And every year, so we are talking constantly with our campus partners and there's a new program that is gonna be rolled out. So we find a way to add it to the passport. So it's reflected, um, constantly being updated and um, updated and promoted to students if we add more things, because we want this to be an inclusive endeavor. We want our campus partners to feel that they have a vested interest. And we wanna make sure that all of our stakeholders Holders, our um, unit heads, our departments feel that this is a great resource for our their students. Um, so it's not only the Career Center's amazing project, it's the university and the department's amazing project for the students. So what does the future look like? It, it, it can look scary. It can look not so scary. It can look amazing. Uh, like this photo. This is an amazing photo generated by AI, of course. Um, you know, what we know is the future of work is in the midst of an extraordinary revolution, primarily powered by rapid technological advancements, such as AI and automation. They're increasingly taking over routine and repetitive tasks, necessitating a shift in focus towards uniquely human skills. 
skills such as creativity, critical thinking, emotional intelligence, and adaptability, they've never been more crucial to our students. They really are the bedrock upon which future careers will be built, and our educational institutions must respond accordingly. This is in order to help students map their competencies to the skills, to the corresponding demand in the marketplace. And speaking of the future of work, we actually have a conference devoted to this in a couple of weeks where our students get to hear from industry professionals about um, various topics um, ranging from you know, people that are talking about how to be a CEO of their own side hustle to how to create an invigorating website for their portfolio. So this is a great time, an innovative time for the Career Center, not only having something like the Credit Passport, but striving to do better, striving to be a leader for our peers and to help our students navigate the future with all the uncertainty and the new technology. What does the future actually look like for them and how can we help support them get there? So I believe Margo is going to drop in um, the link to this website, you are welcome to attend um, any of the sessions that are happening. Yes, it's free. Free for it us parents, free. <laughs> for students, partners. I was going to say free is always fantastic. Uh, well, thank you, Todd. Thank you, Megan, for that wonderful information. Uh, we have lots of questions um, in the chat that we won't be able to cover all of them, but uh, we've got a few that I think um, would be great to answer live. And so I think one question before we get into any of the others, um, which is important to know about, is how are students educated about the services that the Career Center um, offers, um, such as the Career Readiness Passport or any of the events and career fairs that you um, put on. I'd be happy to field that one. Um, email is the main way that we communicate with students. Although we do lots of tabling, we try to make ourselves as visible as possible, getting involved with orientation and, and those types of programs as well, so that students will know that we exist. Uh, but we could also always use your help. <laughs> we love students just popping in. We'll have students that just wander into our office and say, what is this building or your career services? What can you help me with? And we are happy with those kinds of conversations because you don't necessarily know. Um, with a student to make an appointment with an advisor, there doesn't have to be a topic. I love a student that says, hey, I heard you speak in my class. I don't know, you know where to start or what I should be doing. Can you help? And those are great one-on-ones with them. The other thing I would add to that is we have a connector model where we have a team of, of around 20 staff where we're all the, 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 the team members are connected to various areas of the university. And so they're getting the word out to their campus partners when there's new things, new initiatives. So with, um, with the career readiness passport, when that was implemented in the fall, that was emailed out to everyone. We also have a, our marketing and communications team that's managed by a, a couple of staff members in the Career Center, but we have a number of student employees who work on that team. And what we know is our student employees are way better at social media than we are, and they're giving us all kinds of different strategies um, to get the word out. So we're we're certainly using and, and cross promoting with other social media channels around the campus. Thank you for both of your answers. Um, the co-curricular record I see is a very hot topic of discussion in the Q&A. Uh, I'm going to drop the link for the co-curricular record in the chat, um, but there's lots of questions of how does a student add uh, experiences to their code curricular record. How do they obtain it? Can they do? Can they start it now in the the end of the winter quarter if they're graduating at the end of June? Um, and I can share a little bit on this. And and Megan and Todd, feel free to jump in. Um, 
that yes, your student can still add experiences as long as the opportunities that they've been involved with, be it the student leadership, the internships, um, have gone through a, a co-curricular record evaluation process. And then the faculty and staff um, that is responsible for those programs add those students and certify that they have been a part of that opportunity. Uh, for example, uh, uh, in our office, um, we have about seven student leaders that help support parent and family programs, and that position is um, certified by the co-curricular record team. And so for every year, I go in and certify that these students have participated um, with our office for the year. Uh, so employ your students to check with uh, their student organizations, their leadership opportunities, their internships, um, ensure that their uh, faculty and staff have submitted those opportunities to be added to the code curricular record and that they are, are evaluated and added properly um, because the students just can't do it. The faculty and staff also have to be responsible for confirming their participation. Uh, Megan, Todd, anything you'd like to add? Yeah, I, I would just add in, we, we um, it's, it's a vetted process. It's a validated process through the teaching and learning commons. And so each partner around the university um, and whether it's a student group or a faculty or, or a department, they have to do an application process and that's vetted. And then, so then you become a validator. So when we developed this new program, Learning Line Employment Program last year, we went through that process, applied for the co-curricular record. And now any student who does a LAPE experience moving forward, we validate that at the end of their quarter. Okay, thank you. Uh, another question is how and where can students find the self-assessment to complete? Right on our website. So they um, go to the Career Center website and they can find Career Launch there. Hopefully it's it's nice and um, visible there. We, we try to make it as visible as possible. Uh, as we are running up against some time, I'm gonna try and speed through these. Um, there is a question about on the competency slide, are there concrete uh, is there a concrete measurement index for students to refer to? Is there a concrete measurement index? No. So I think the in the career, um, the career launch assessment, that's the pre-assessment. So you, you're going through that. And that's really using the National Association of Colleges and Employers, that NACE, those NACE competencies, not necessarily the UC San Diego ones. Whereas in the passport, we're, we're using the UC San Diego ones. And so it's more, more of a self-assessment. That's why some of the things where if we, we do have in implementations where, uh, like in the late program, keep going back to that, but we, we implemented it for the faculty and the mentors to rate the students. So it's not just a self-assessment, it's also kind of a, a impartial or um, independent assessment of that men from that mentor. Right, um, okay, we've got time for two more. So uh, my student is an engineering student. Would you recommend that they start with the engineering career resources or that they visit the career center first? Is there a you know, re repetitive services within engineering, um, what would you recommend? I'd recommend using both. We have, we work very closely with the College of Engineering or the School of Engineering. So you can start with us or start with them, but we will probably bounce you back and forth. We have different partners and different workshops and events that are hosted. So start with one, but you'll probably end up using both. And uh, before uh, we wrap up this session, uh, simply how does a student go about starting the passport process? And is there, is it ever too late for a student to get started utilizing the career readiness passport? Never too late. Um, it's, it's, it's really, and it was designed not to be, some colleges and universities, they do in your first year, this is what you're going to do in your second year. And it's, it's scaled up like that. This was really designed from design thinking possibilities and, and, a, and a framework of design thinking, because we know all students are at different levels. And so we may all be, we may come to the table with different skills and competencies. And so there's other ones that we have to develop. So um, our best advice is start with the career center with a career coach who can guide you through that process. 
start with the career launch and then come talk to us. And then we can help guide students through that process. Well, thank you both so much for your expertise and your time today. Um, I really appreciate you taking the uh, the effort to present to our families uh, in support of their students' career readiness. Um, on the screen, you can see uh, this is all of the information if you can recommend your student get, to get connected with the Career Center to start with their career readiness passport, to set up a an appointment with an advisor, um, or seek out any of the other resources or events the Career Center has upcoming. If you would like to rewatch this recording or share it with a family member and utilize translated subtitles, the instructions are available on screen. You can do that on our YouTube channel once this recording is posted tomorrow and select from the settings feature the auto translate as part of the subtitle feature within YouTube, as well as the recording being emailed out tomorrow uh, to all registrants for this session. We will include a copy of the, the presentation slide deck. So don't worry if you were taking notes and you missed something or you, you're not sure uh, about a specific detail, we'll, we'll be sending out the entire presentation tomorrow along with the recording. Uh, and finally, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day uh, to join us in supporting your student success at UC San Diego. Uh, we will be coming back with another session as a part of the Trying Family Web Series in April. This session will be centered around student mental health and wellness. Uh, so please stay tuned for more information posted on our website and sent out through our email distribution list. But in the meantime, please feel free to visit any of our uh, resources available on our website. Uh, email us if your question didn't get answered today and you'd like a follow up at parents at ucsd.edu. Um, or please follow us on any of our social media accounts. Specifically, that last one, please make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. So in case you miss any of our future try and web series sessions, you can catch the recording. All right, again, thank you, Todd. Thank you, Megan. And thank you all for hanging out with us this afternoon, evening, or morning for wherever you're joining us from. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody.